All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everybody, this is the PASS DigiWare Housing and Business Intelligence Virtual Chapter. And I'd like to welcome along Matthew Roche, who is our speaker today. Uh, Matthew will introduce himself in a little while. In the meantime, wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening or good night. We are a global organisation and I'd like to share some, some past community news with you, if I may. So first of all, if you are planning on attending the PASS Summit 2014, uh, we'll see you there and I'm really looking forward to it. If you are looking for a discount, we have a code you can use, so please, please get in touch with me and we'll see what we can do. So we actually had our preview of the past summit sessions. Those just went up on the YouTube channels earlier this week. So if you're interested in seeing some of the sessions before they happen, then please do have a look. They're not exactly the same. I know when I did my summit session, it's an adjunct to my actual session that I'll be delivering on the day. I can't wait to summit. I just love the event. It's great having so many SQL Server experts in one place and it's a great way to learn. So some virtual chapter meetings, I'd like to point out to you that the Global Chinese uh, book chapter is starting up again. They had a meeting on September the 1st, uh, September the 9th, and that's going to continue. Um, just going to go back a slide or two. Now, today's session is on using Power BI for managing personal fitness. We're still organising the sessions for October at the minute, but those of you on our mailing list will get um, a copy and a note of what we've got available. So upcoming SQL Saturdays, these events are all taking place. We've got three happening this weekend. We've got one in Boston, which are Business Intelligence Edition. One in Orlando and one in mobile. I don't know if I've said that properly. And because we are an, a truly international organisation, on the 4th of October we have one in Athens and we also have one in the Netherlands, which is in Utrecht in Holland. I'm presenting there, so I'm looking forward to that. And there's also one in Tirana as well. If you'd like to know more about SQL Saturday events, visit sqlsaturday.com. Now, I'm organising one in London on the 22nd of November. It's a business analytics edition. We are actually full, but if you add yourself to the waiting list, if there's any attrition of places, then hopefully you'd manage to get a session, an actual seat there. So finally, um, if you're interested in growing your career, uh, there's one thing you can do, is volunteer with PASS. I know that certainly since I've started to volunteer with PASS, um, it's really changed my life in some ways because I met so many great friends and I was able to connect, learn and share with people with, who work for Microsoft. So it's helped my career because I've learned a lot and I've made great friends as well. So if you're interested, interested in that, please let me know. Um, we don't expect everyone to go up and want to speak or something like that, but if you want to sort of help run a SQL Saturday or your local user group, there's lots of different ways that you can connect, learn and share. Okay, so I'm just going to pass uh, control over to Matthew and I'll let Matthew introduce himself. I've really been excited about Matthew's session and I'd like to say thank you to him for supporting our Power BI month that we've been having. This month it's been really successful. We've managed to reach out to a lot of people. So with that, I will hand over to Matthew. All right. Thank you very much, Jen. Uh, good morning to everyone around the world. It's 7 o'clock in the morning here in Redmond, so uh, hopefully I will be able to keep all of us awake. There's not a lot of people in the office, but uh, one of the things that I like to do, I've made it a habit to start off my morning every day. First thing I do when I get up is go to the gym. Uh, and this is really what has motivated me to be here today. Uh, I, I want to give uh, extra special thanks to Jen for making this happen. Uh, not only is Jen uh, one of the real movers and shakers in the past community, our, our techno technical community, uh, Jen also shares a passion for fitness, and it was her suggestion that she posted on social media uh, that got the conversation going that ended up in this session. Uh, so. Uh, you know, the, the most thanks and the most kudos to Jen for making this work. So 
when I was putting this together, uh, the whole focus of today's session is about using self-service BI tools that Microsoft has created as part of its Power BI offering uh, to track personal fitness. Uh, I was trying to come up with uh, sort of a clever name uh, on Power BI, so I was thinking maybe we should go with Power Lifting BI, and I figured that at some point there will be someone on the call uh, who knows that what we're talking about is not technically power lifting, it's more bodybuilding or weight training. Uh, so I figured that it would be even more fitting to say that this is going to be a, uh, a power TMI session or too much information. Uh, the session that we're uh, uh, about to embark on is a very personal session. So I will be showing off my own fitness data. I will be talking about my own fitness story. Uh, and we'll be showing my own progress pictures throughout. I'm not really an exhibitionist, but uh, I think that it's a, a real core part of the story. I want to show a technical solution, uh, and I will also want to show uh, how each one of us can make a difference in our own lives uh, by committing to fitness, by, by being more active, by changing our day-to-day uh, -day behaviors, uh, and hopefully uh, if you are a data-centric person or someone who is motivated by data, uh, uh, as I am, uh, the solution that we're showing off and which you'll be able to download at the end of the session uh, is going to be a big part of that for you. It's really changed the way that I think uh, about uh, uh, my fitness and my progress, and I've used it as a motivation tool as well. Uh, there are a couple things that I want to stress. Uh, the first one is I don't claim to be an expert about anything. Uh, I used to be a business intelligence practitioner. When I joined Microsoft, now I build BI tools and can't claim to uh, uh, to really know what's going on in the real world anymore because I've been with Microsoft for about six years uh, and have forgotten what the real world is like. Uh, and uh, I have never been a fit person. Everything that we're discussing in the story to come is uh, uh, really relevant to the last two years or so. So I am very much a learner, uh, learn new things every day. Uh, but with that said, uh, one of the things that I have found is that uh, a lot of people are really uh, afraid to ask questions. A lot of people uh, uh, you know, want to be in better shape, they want to be more fit, uh, but it's not something that they understand how to address. Uh, one of the things that I never want to do is to be the guy who goes around offering unsolicited fitness advice because that guy is annoying. Uh, so, I think about this session in some ways as you know, essentially being the unsolicited fitness advice that you asked for by attending. And uh, before we get going, since it is bright and early and I can't see any of you, uh, you're going to give me some data about why you're here and what your goals are. And this is the price that you pay for uh, Polls be clear. All right, that's the first time I've done polls inside uh, GoToMeeting, so I'm going to work under the assumption uh, that you are here. Yeah, I see uh, interesting information flowing in. So essentially, I want to see what you're here for. Is it the technical stuff? Is it the fitness stuff? And it looks like most people are equally interested in the fitness and uh, the, the the fitness and technical details, and about five percent really just want to see the shirtless pictures of me that they promised, which is kind of a scary uh, scary statement there. We've got about 75% of the folks on the call who have voted, uh, so I'm actually going to close this poll and move on to the next one. So the next one is, how fit are you? And uh, just, you know, as we'll see in the session that comes, uh, I've been working out regularly for uh, almost exactly two years. It was early October of 2012 that I started working out. Uh, I've really changed the way that I think about myself and the way that I think about fitness in my life uh, through this effort. Uh, but for you know the the other 43 years of my life, uh, I would have answered no comment uh, as uh, about six percent of you have. It looks like most people on the call work out regularly. Uh, for one way or another, either all the time or occasionally. That is great to see. And the final question is, how business intelligence savvy are you? So most people said they were interested in the technical details. Uh, so 
Uh, I'm interested in seeing, you know, do you actually work in BI professionally? Do you work in other technical fields? Are you a, uh, a, a data person or analyst that works in Excel? Uh, or is this uh, completely new to you? And as uh, the numbers are coming in, it looks, which is probably not a surprise given the fact that this is a past session, uh, about 62% uh, are BI professionals, another 27% are other technical professionals, uh, and we've got 2% uh, who claim to be complete newbies. So I will close those polls down, and it, I will then hide the poll results uh, to get back into the presentation. So thank you very much for the data. I may post charts later on. Let me click here and close this. So the session itself, we have uh, three things that I want to go into. Uh, the first one is going to be super quickly. It's a single slide. What is Power BI? What's the quick overview? This is not a marketing talk. I will move through this as quickly as possible. Uh, the other pillar, the second pillar, is essentially my story, what motivated me, what inspired me, uh, how did I do it, uh, and then how did I pull the data together. And then finally, where I want to spend the bulk of the session is a solution drill down into uh, the capabilities that I built in Excel with Power BI. So for that first one, uh, here's the, the slide that I stole from the marketing team. Power BI is an offering from Microsoft that's focused on self-service business intelligent. Uh, there are two primary uh, sets of capabilities. On the right-hand side in orange, we have uh, collaborative capabilities uh, that are delivered in the cloud through Office 365. You need an Office 365 Power BI subscription to get these capabilities. It's awesome if you're working on a team and want to share data. Uh, on the left-hand side, we have self-service capabilities in Excel. Uh, for the most part, if you own Excel 2013, uh, these are free add-ins or capabilities that are built core into Excel. Uh, everything that we are showing today is uh, on the green side. We are not using any of the capabilities for which you would need an Office 365 Power BI subscription. Uh, we want to focus on something that is accessible uh, and uh, effective for everyone. So with that said, I want to tell a little bit about my story. So first and foremost, when I close my eyes, this is the mental self-image that I have of myself. Uh, if you have ever met me in person, I've probably mentioned Manowar to you. They're the most awesome heavy metal band in the world. Their songs, their message, their music is all about you know, personal empowerment, finding the strength within, being the best person that you can be, not letting anything in the world get in your way to come between you and your goals. Uh, and I've never been a fit person, you know, genetically. Uh, I was born to be tall and skinny, so until I was 40, I could eat whatever I want, never work out, never gain any weight. Wasn't strong, but that was okay. And uh, I, I travel around the world. You can see me there in the front row. Uh, Manowar show, Bulgaria 2010. It was this show that motivated me uh, to start getting fit. Uh, I've got a couple friends, well, I've got dozens of friends from around the world that I see at Manowar shows whenever they tour. Uh, uh, and in particular, I've got a, a friend who is a police captain in Stuttgart, Germany. My friend Udo, he's a couple years older than me, and he's just this mountain of muscle. And I saw him in Bulgaria and did a mental comparison of myself to him, which is never, never the safe thing. But I realized, you know, I've just turned 40. If I'm ever going to be in decent shape, this is the time. Now is the time that I'm going to act. And when I got back to the States after this, uh, uh, after this tour, I got a gym membership, started working with a personal trainer, started working out multiple times a week. I traveled a lot for work, but I had a workout that I could do in a car gym whenever I wanted. I was making great progress. In March of 2011, I ended up getting into a car crash. So I was actually driving back, believe it or not, from a Manowar concert, hit some nasty weather, hit some black ice, went off the road, totaled my car, broke a couple ribs. Uh, and you might think that this is you know, what derailed my progress. And of course, you'd be wrong. Uh, this is me two weeks later, Birmingham, UK, front row, being crushed by the crowd, uh, but still with the two broken ribs. Uh, the key thing is uh, I was very motivated, didn't let it stop me, kept working out, you know, made sure that my, my trainer gave me a routine 
that I could work through without injuring myself, that wasn't what stopped me. Ironically, the thing that got me onto a downward spiral was a, a, a professional opportunity. In 2011, in the summer, uh, I took a job on the SQL Server team. I'd been with Microsoft, but in a different team. Uh, moved my family out to the West Coast, uh, and at that point, uh, the, the work stress, the family stress, all of these things sort of built up lots of great food, and just for the record, these are all pictures that I took on my camera over the, the, the year or so that follows. So I stopped working out, I broke my routine, uh, I started enjoying all of the capabilities, all of the things that Seattle had to offer, great food, great drink, uh, you know, be it at home or on the outside, our uh, restaurants and so on. Uh, and over the course of the next 18 months, I gained almost 40 pounds. And this is, sadly, I hate to admit it, this is not a before picture. This was January 1st of last year after I had lost about 15 pounds already. Before then, I just couldn't face the idea of taking a progress picture. At this point, I was starting to see a noticeable change, and I wanted to start capturing my progress. And at this point, the, the journey really began for me. So let's think about what it was. We saw how I got into this, this horrible shape. So you know, it was, it was stress. It was a break in routine. It was a lot of bad habits that I let get away from me. How did I move forward? Well, probably not a surprise here. You know, the, the inspiration that has always driven me. Also, I, tr I started to use uh, social media. So I found an article online uh, where a fitness blogger, you know, a techie fitness, fitness blogger as well, talked about how he worked with uh, uh, Facebook and Twitter, and he had committed that for a year he was going to post his weight and his body fat percentage online every day. And he described this as a self-shaming diet, which, you know, I, I don't believe in shame. You know, if there's, you know, if there's something that you would be ashamed of, you just don't do it. Uh, but it certainly is a focusing factor. If there's a metric that you're tracking, sharing that metric and having visibility around it is always a motivator to move that metric, you know, from red to yellow to green. So, uh, again, got a gym membership. I uh, didn't have a trainer to work with. I've yet to find one out in this area that, uh, uh, that I've meshed with. Uh, but every day, started working out. Uh, I would get to the gym, and I would post uh, from my scale in the morning uh, my weight and my body fat. I also used, uh, yet again, uh, forcing functions and deadlines. So this is me at a Manowar show in Sweden last year. So I would use these shows as a, uh, a, a motivator, a forcing function, a mental focus to motivate me, you know, to work it harder at the gym, to be a little bit more careful with what I ate, uh, having, uh, uh, having these factors that I can put in place myself keeps me on track and keeps me motivated. And you may well think that I'm evil when I say this, but one of the things that I do at work, you know, I love to cook, well, I love to eat, but I also love to cook and bake. Every Monday morning, I will bring in treats for my team. So this is a picture of some truffles that I brought in a few months back. Uh, you know, the kids and I will spend the weekend in the kitchen a lot of times, and uh, I get in trouble if I leave these at home because then the family and I will eat them. So I bring them in, and uh, in addition to Im improving my own situation, I will uh, increase the calories that are being consumed by the team. I'm sl slimming down. I'm building muscle and fattening up the people around me, so I feel and look even better by comparison. Now, let's get into uh, uh, the actual changes that I've made. So, and, and remember, we are on track for the technical details, so we'll move into that as quickly as we can. What I've found is that just as when I was learning business intelligence, so as I was uh, ramping up on the SQL Server BI side of things you know, over the last uh, 10 or 15 years, uh, I had uh, a lot of learning opportunities. I've seen a lot of similar patterns in uh, my fitness journey as well. Uh, and I am going to read uh, some of the uh, items on this slide. Normally I don't do this, but I want to uh, focus on a few of these. Uh, the first thing is it's all the entire process on both sides is about forcing something to do something that it doesn't want to do or wasn't meant to do. With business intelligence, 
the whole challenge about BI, if you, if you boil it down, it's about taking data that was meant for one purpose, for the, uh, the transactional system in which it was created, and forcing it into a different shape for a different purpose as part of the analytic system that you're creating. With fitness, you're trying to force your body to change, and the last thing that your body wants to do is change. It wants to be as efficient and lazy as possible, so you've got to put stresses on it to force it into a new shape. Um, the big picture is more important. When I was first learning SQL Server integration services, uh, uh, most of the documentation, most of the books that I found, you know, they would have this really granular technical information about, you know, this specific task does this thing, and this transformation does this other thing. And it's good information, but unless you understand the broader context, it's not really useful. So uh, the same sort of thing is true with fitness. Uh, I found a lot of very uh, technical, granular information online, uh, but the thing that has been most useful to me is actually the bigger picture things, you know, having uh, uh, structured information, structured programs to work through. Uh, from a motivational perspective, you know, when, I, when I'm at work, uh, I, I am always much more productive, much more focused uh, when there is a deadline approaching. This is the same thing for me with fitness. Uh, if I know that I am going to be you know, going to, for example, pass the, the SQL Server conference that Jen mentioned uh, in a couple months. I will see friends there or at a Man of show or what have you that I only see once or twice a year. That's a great motivating factor for me to be in better shape then. Uh, and that external motivation as well. Uh, so having the, uh, uh, having the visibility for the metrics that you're tracking, you know, on a project, you know, you've made a commitment to someone uh, that uh, that you will you know deliver certain things on a certain deadline uh, and that's driving you even if you're not feeling personally motivated it's the same sort of thing uh, when I get up and uh, go to the gym every morning you know there are some mornings when I just do not want to get out of bed but I know that if I don't check in uh, at the gym on Facebook there's probably three or four people out there uh, in my network uh, that will ask me questions about it or give me a hard time about it that's one of the things that keeps me going. And uh, perhaps the most significant thing is that the factors that make the biggest difference, both in fitness and BI, uh, are often these boring behind the scenes details. A BI project will never succeed unless you have executive sponsorship and the right budget and the contacts in the business to provide that deep context for the data. You know, as a technical person, often this is the last thing that you want to care about but you can't succeed without it. From a fitness perspective, the thing that almost everyone focuses on is the exercise. You know, how much am I lifting? How, how far have I run? How fast am I doing it? Uh, but the thing that makes the biggest difference is almost always what you eat. Uh, I found that simply by prepping my meals, and I'm, I'm a pretty good cook and I love to cook, so this is not a burden for me. I know that it is for some people, but I'll spend an afternoon on the weekends uh, I will prep uh, lean protein, I will prep uh, slow carbs, I will prep veggies, and uh, each morning when I come to work, I have whatever I'm going to eat during the day with me already. This enables me to succeed just as having the business details out of the way uh, is going to help you succeed as well. I'm not sure why we are building so slowly on the slide, but uh, the most important thing that I've learned in both contexts is that it depends. Uh, having worked as a business intelligence consultant for many years, you can't uh, answer a question without saying it depends because there's so many things that are situational and context sensitive. The same thing is true with fitness. What works for one person may not work for another. What works for you today may not work for you tomorrow. So let me do a quick tour uh, uh, of some of the things that we have found online. So I want to show off a couple resources that I have found to be super valuable, and this is going to tie into the data that we're bringing in. Uh, first of all, uh, let me actually come here. We'll come into Firefox first. So first of all, uh, Photocracy is a, uh, a fitness-centric social media site that has gamification uh, uh, elements as well. So essentially, this is the tool that I use to track my workouts every day. Uh, so yesterday was a leg day, started off with some deadlifts and some squats and so on and so forth. And you can enter for each exercise how many pounds you lifted, how many repetitions you did, and when you log that workout, 
Let me come in here. Come on. I have obviously no idea what I'm looking for. There we go. So when you log the workout, you can earn points for it. Notice this here. And then when you earn those points, you can level up. And this is a, a, a great gamification mechanism. When I'm at the gym in the morning, you know, often I will get to the gym before 5 o'clock. Uh, so there's not a heck of a lot of mental energy in me at that point. But knowing that if I can uh, do one more rep or one more set or one more exercise and I can earn more points, not only am I going to have a higher score for the day, I'm going to hit the next level sooner. Uh, and let me click on the leaderboard here. Uh, this is one of the things that, that absolutely I just can't get enough of moving up on the leaderboard. So I'm currently 125. If we scroll down here, this is 125 out of around uh, 200,000 people on the network. Uh, I don't look like any of these super fit guys. So that's all well and good, but I've got the numbers and I'm a numbers guy. So we've got photography, awesome tool, awesome network, and there's a lot of social media capabilities and collaboration as well if you're looking for support or input, but it's also a great data source. It's where I get most of my data. Uh, another source is coming from bodybuilding.com. Uh, this is the granular information where for nearly a thousand different exercises, you can go in and either browse by muscle group or, let me actually just click on one of these uh, to start with, we'll drill down in here. For every single exercise, there is a broad set of metadata you know, the type of exercise, the type of equipment, and so on. There is a video that describes it. There's a series of pictures, and there is a text-based description of how to perform the exercise. This is perhaps the single most useful thing uh, for me as I was getting started. It's like, how the heck do I do that? You know, you see the video, but I'm a very slow learner for physical things. Having this depth of information has been super, super valuable for me. But it's the tactical stuff. What I needed at the beginning was strategic stuff. And this is where I started. So when I first started working out, uh, I found this 12-week program. Uh, Lee Labrada is, uh, I, I think of him as the Mr. Rogers of weightlifting. Uh, you know, he's a multi-time Mr. Olympia winner, so he's you know, a big name in the industry. But he comes across as you know, your grandfather of weights. And he has a, a, a great uh, program. It's 12 weeks for every day. There's a video. He explains what you need to do and why. Uh, it is the perfect place to get started. So if you have one takeaway on the fitness side, if you want to get into better shape, uh, come here, start here. It's super accessible. Uh, even if you've never lifted weights before in your life, this is an awesome place to start. When I finished this, I discovered this guy, Jim Stepani, and, and Jen has actually had the pleasure of meeting Jim in person, so I'm very jealous of that, Jen. Uh, and Jim is sort of the polar opposite of, of Lee Labrada from a, a, a motivation perspective. So Jim is very in-your-face, he's very metal, and it's all about you know, pushing and being, you know, to, to one degree or another, the alpha male inside you, be you male or female. Uh, and when I was first starting this program, I was thinking, you know, I don't know if I'm up to this. You know, I've, been, I've been lifting literally for just three months. This is, you know, a very different communication, but I had awesome results with this program as well as with his next one, which was focused on uh, fat loss rather than just muscle building. Uh, and currently, all of the routines that I uh, am working on uh, are coming from his site. So he has his own dedicated site uh, with a whole bunch of routines. I never get bored. Uh, I have yet to hit a plateau. It makes a huge difference there. Now, let's actually see how we're using some of this data together. Uh, before we jump into the solution, I want to throw out a few more things uh, that I learned about Power BI from my BI experience. Uh, uh, first and foremost, I want to throw out kudos to the Power Query team. Uh, Power Query, which we're going to spend a lot of time in today, may very well be the most awesome data tool ever created. Uh, the first couple times I used it, I, you know, I, I wanted something with more boxes and arrows because that's how I was used to thinking about data and data transformation. But the more I use Power Query and its interactive, uh, powerful capabilities, uh, the more that I realized that this is the tool that I had always wanted and always needed, uh, but never realized it. Uh, the next thing that I learned as building the solution uh, is that 
Uh, Self-service doesn't necessarily mean simple or simplistic. The patterns that I use putting together my, my fitness tracking are the same patterns uh, that I've used in corporate BI solutions over the years. Uh, and uh, again, we'll drill down into that very shortly. Uh, I had a quote, this is from a client that I used to work with about 10 years ago back in New York. Uh, we were pulling in data from a system called Inquire. It was this proprietary system uh, and we were just running into problem after problem after problem with our, uh, our, our data ingress. And this guy, Jerry, one of the technical folks on the team, uh, he said in a meeting, it's like, you know, we planned for wolves and Inquire is werewolves. And it is perhaps the most profound statement that any customer has ever said to me on a project in the context of data quality. Uh, no matter how well you think you know the data, it's always going to throw a twist at you. And especially working with the photocracy data, the files that I get from photocracy, uh, I had lots and lots of werewolf moments uh, when working with this. And most of them I believe I've addressed, so we're good there. Um, uh, iterating, you know, you want to you want to go through, start small, add functionality over time. It's exactly what I've done to get to the point where I am today. Uh, and uh, you've read the slide already, but but super kudos to everyone who has helped into the whole community. Uh, special kudos to Chris Webb. Uh, Chris, your blog has taught me more about Power Query than anything has, and uh, honestly, I don't think that I could have done this without. Uh, the information that you've shared. So thanks to everyone in that uh, uh, technical community out there. So with no further ado, let's actually jump into uh, the solution itself, or uh, to start with, an overview of the solution as diagrammed in Visio. So what I've done is I've pulled in information from uh, four primary sources. We'll walk through these and then we'll walk through the solution. Uh, first of all, I've used a uh, uh, set of functions in Power Query and then a query that calls those functions to pull in exercise metadata from bodybuilding.com. You remember that page that we looked at that had uh, the, the exercise description and the type of equipment and all those things? Well, essentially, I have uh, a, a function built in Power Query where I give it the URL for one of those pages, it parses out the information on the HTML, it returns a single record that has all of that metadata. I've got a function where you pass in a muscle group, so you know that was one of the navigation paths on the website, and it will then return one row for each of the uh, for each of the exercises that targets that muscle group. And then I've got a query that will call each of these muscle groups and return the whole darned uh, thing. Uh, it then loads this into a, a, a worksheet in an Excel workbook that I'm calling my data cache. The reason I have this uh, uh, two separate workbooks, so on the left-hand side of the barrier here is one workbook, on the right-hand side is another. The reason that I've got it separated is that going out and calling you know, what's well over a thousand web pages and parsing the information from them, this could take a good five or ten minutes depending on your internet connection. So, I don't want to have to wait that long when I'm refreshing the workbook every time. So I have uh, this first workbook as my staging location. Getting back to the patterns that you see in corporate BI, typically you go from your data sources to a staging location and from there on to your data warehouse. This is the same pattern that we're applying here, applying it a little bit loosely but applying it nonetheless. The second data source that I have is photocracy. And I want to jump here into my, uh, uh, into my browser for a second to show what Photocracy provides from a data perspective. So in Photocracy, if you click on the U tab in the top navigation and then click on the Performance tab in the left navigation, you can see for each exercise that you've performed, you can see uh, information either in a chart form, so here's you know, all of the barbell deadlifts that I've done over time, uh, or you can choose to see it as a CSV, but as the savvy people will notice, the way that Photocracy does this is the CSV data is not URL addressable, unless you're going to copy and paste hundreds of these things, there's not really a way uh, to get it out of the system. So what I have done, and this is all documented, so don't stress the details now, is I've installed a Firefox add-in called Grease Monkey, 
and I have downloaded and installed into GreaseMonkey a script that is dedicated to getting a bulk CSV load. So I've hit refresh, and once I've hit refresh, because this is what the add-in requires, uh, this bulk CSV link appears. So each time that I want to refresh the data in my workbook, I'll click on this guy, and essentially this script, I'm not sure how well this will show up in the web meeting, but it simply loops through all of the exercises, generates the CSV file for each one, and then when it's done, it will present it for download as a zip file. So during my solution, I've got this script, this bulk CSV download script, that will uh, enable me to get all of the data from Photocracy on a regular basis and dump it into a folder on my local hard drive. The other way that I'm using Photocracy data, and this is, this is Im Im important, which we'll talk about in a second, is I have actually done a little one-time manual data entry. First and foremost, there's no way to get the full exercise list out of Photocracy, so I did a copy and paste. Uh, I have put into my first Excel workbook these uh, Photocracy exercises, so I have uh, a column for the exercise themselves. This is a name that shows up in those text files. Uh, and then I've created a column for exercise type. And the reason why this is important is each one of these files has a different format. There's about uh, 10 or so different formats. They have different column counts, different column orders, and different data in different columns. It was not designed for the type of purposes that I want to use it for. Uh, and this is uh, perhaps the thing that has plagued me the most. So I will use in my downstream uh, ETL in Power Query uh, this information to say what do I do with each file. The, the thing that I want to stress is if you are using the solution that I've developed, you may need to edit this information because I have only validated the exercise type for those exercises that I have personally performed and logged. So there may well be errors in here. It's very easy to change. Just update this table and save the file. Uh, but uh, 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 what am I trying to say? But if you see something that doesn't look right, uh, this, this is certainly a place to go. Jumping back into Visio, uh, there's also the need for an exercise mapping because Photocracy has different names for the exercises. You know, maybe it's barbell deadlift, where the other one calls it barbell deadlift, uh, close grip or medium grip or something along those lines. So there's a lot of variation. Uh, there is a mapping table between the two. Uh, notice that there's only around 350 records in here. Uh, again. Uh, I have only mapped those that I have done or the ones where the, uh, uh, where the exercise matches. So if you're going through and using this solution uh, and you don't see an exercise showing up or the full metadata isn't there, this is a place to look. The other uh, source for where I'm pulling information is coming out of Facebook. I pull in all of my check-ins uh, because this can also be a time-consuming process I'm doing this in my staging workbook as well and dropping it into a worksheet that I can then pull in uh, from my primary workbook. So all of this is in the first workbook. Let me uh, come up here. So I call this my reference data and cache uh, workbook, call it whatever you want. Uh, but this is something that you can come in. Let me come into my check-in. Uh, simply right-click on uh, a query, choose refresh, it will go through and, and reload everything. Uh, and uh, once this is done, on whatever uh, time frame you want to do it, uh, you can simply use that from the primary workbook, which contains the data model and all of the reports. So let's actually jump over to this. This is the primary, uh, the primary workbook that uh, you will interact with when using this solution. Uh, the key things that I want to point out is uh, late last night I added an introduction sheet. So uh, the first time that you download this uh, from my OneDrive, uh, you can follow these instructions. So essentially there is the one-time setup that talks about getting that script and saving the files and uh, editing uh, a few queries to point to where you put your data. Uh, ongoing instructions stressing the importance of listening to Manowar while you're working out. Uh, and then instructions on getting your data from Photocracy uh, and refreshing 
uh, the data inside the workbook. So uh, it's all well documented. You don't need to listen super closely in this regard. But what I've done is I have used the query group capabilities inside of uh, Power Query to group together uh, all of the queries so that A, they're logically organized, and B, the one thing that you need to do to refresh all of the data is to right click on this star schema uh, group and choose refresh. And at this point, it will go out pulling information from uh, both OneDrive, which is the, the final data source that I haven't talked about. Every morning when I get up, I log my, uh, my weight and body fat from the scale. Uh, and those workbooks are stored up on OneDrive. So it will refresh that. It will pull in information from uh, my staging workbook. It will pull in information from those photocracy files, uh, as well as the time dimension, which honestly doesn't have a backing data source. It simply uses a Power Query script uh, to start from uh, January 1st of 2011, so the first year when I was really working out and tracking things, uh, up through the current day, uh, and uh, presents a lot of columns that you can use uh, to slice and dice the time dimension however you want to. So for this workbook, I've done a few things that I uh, want to uh, point out or want to stress. Uh, the, the first thing is that I have a, uh, I have a common cached staging data query, which essentially points to that, that first workbook, to, that, uh, 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 to the staging data workbook. And then for any query that pulls data from there, these queries are actually referencing this common pointer query. The reason I've done this is this prevents you from needing to update the location of that workbook in multiple places. We've got the single query with the path to that, so as you can choose to save things wherever you want to and you only need to update that in one case. I have done something similar here with the Photocracy source files and metadata where this is a common query where as I'm pulling information out of uh, all of these files, so I've got one query for weightlifting exercises, essentially anything that I'm saying, I lifted this many, or this, this many pounds times these many reps, or time-based, or time and distance, or body weight. These are the four primary categories of exercises. They're all pulling through this uh, one uh, source query, which both pulls in the file data itself from that bulk CSV folder that we downloaded with the script, uh, as well as the information from the staging workbook about the types of exercises. And I want to come in here, wrong workbook. I want to show this guy just for a second so that you can see what we are uh, returning here. So this is the, uh, the query in Power Query, and as you can see, I have the file contents themselves, so this is where we'll actually get the data from. I've got information about the file, but let me scroll off to the right here. So here on the right, I've got a function that will calculate the number of columns in that file, because this is going to be vital when we're combining the data from these files. If some of them have seven columns and some of them have nine columns, it's going to choke on itself. We're not going to be able to work with that even though Power Query is much more forgiving than, for example, SQL Server Integration Services is uh, when working with uh, variances in, in uh, input data. Uh, it's something that uh, we, we still need to be careful about prepping the data and knowing what we're working with. I've got the exercise name, which I am parsing from the file, uh, and I have the exercise type, which is the metadata that you saw earlier. So because this is uh, both a pointer to the folder and it has the metadata I need downstream, this is going to give me the ability to more intelligently handle the actual data coming out of these files. I'm going to choose the weightlifting exercises query as an example. So I'm going to open this up and show off what we have here. So first of all, for the source, this is exactly what we just saw. So the source is pointing to that query. I'm going to filter it, and actually let me do this. I'm going to come into the advanced view. We never actually need to work with the script behind the scenes. Nine times out of ten, uh, most Power Query users don't need to look at code. So if you're not a technical person, uh, feel free to let your eyes glaze over at this point. But I want to, to stress that, first of all, we're pulling in from that source. 
for the first set of files, I'm going to say only give me those where the column count is 9, and we've got this exercise type, and then basically we combine all the binaries, we get the data from all the files, uh, we do a little bit of reshaping and a little bit of typing, we pull it together. Next, we've got some non-standard ones, and I don't know why Photocracy does this, but they've got this one exercise where they just track it differently. So we've got a separate set of logic for that, uh, and there are some exercises where it's uh, weight and reps and distance, like if you're carrying something over a distance, uh, a farmer's walk being one of them, you, know, you pick up a big dumbbell and you walk around with it. Uh, so uh, for these different format, different uh, uh, data to work with, and at the end we bring them together, we change the data types, uh, I add an index column, uh, getting back to our data werewolves as well, one of the things that I found is that there is no unique key inside the data. So even if you're looking at the activity and the date and the set, we think, hey, this is probably going to be unique, uh, you'd be wrong. So I add a surrogate key, basically an artificial uh, key field so that I can uniquely identify each record, which comes in handy in the data model uh, later on. Uh, so once we've got uh, this data pulled in, we've got our weightlifting data, we've got our body composition data, we've got our check-in data that we're pulling in. We have uh, a, uh, a set of both fact and dimension tables. Uh, I had someone tell me on Facebook yesterday, it's like, no one uses the fact and dimension or fact and dim prefixes anymore. It's like, oh, maybe you're right, but I did in this case, and it's too uh, difficult to change it now, so we're going to be old school here. So we've got our time dimension. We have an exercise dimension, which has uh, one record for each exercise that we have data about. We've got our, our body composition, which has uh, uh, one uh, weight and body fat record per day. We have our exercise log, where we have one record per, uh, uh, one record per exercise that we've performed. So all of this, oh, I keep going to the wrong workbook. So all of this is in the workbook itself. This is the big thing. Let's see what we can do with it. So walking through uh, the workbook itself, I'm actually just going to go left to right. Uh, one of the things that I track, uh, you know, that, that there's a, a, a general guideline or a general, uh, uh, a general best practice that I see everywhere in fitness is like, don't get on the scale. Don't get on the scale more than once a week or once a month or whatever it is. Uh, don't worry about it because, you know, honestly, this is something I've, I've learned many times, uh, body fat and weight, they're not the things that you're targeting. That's not your actual KPIs, but it is an easy thing to track and it is a part of the big picture. Uh, the thought of capturing data once per week when I could capture data every day it would just drive me crazy. I'm an OCD data guy in that regard. So I capture the data every day, but I only look at the aggregate trends. So I can see on a month-by-month -month basis what my average max and min weight and average max and min uh, body fat are. I can see trends, uh, and I can, you know, essentially, I know the stories behind the dips and the, uh, and the peaks and so on, which we won't get into today. Uh, but it's something that as you are working to remain motivated, this is a great way to look and say, you know, I may not be having the month that I did last year. You know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe I, uh, you know, missed a couple days at the gym, or maybe uh, I, I didn't, uh, you know, control myself, and I had that fourth cocktail when I really didn't, you know, really should have only had one or two. Uh, you know, it's you, you have to live your life, uh, but being able to remember. Uh, how far you've come, even if you're feeling like, oh my goodness, I've messed everything up, uh, remembering the progress that you've made is very important, at least to me. This is one of the ways that, uh, that progress pictures and tracking uh, comes in handy as well. You guys saw my not really a before picture uh, earlier as well, so you know, we come in here, you know, that was, I was you know, pushing 210 pounds at that point, and even though I was down 10 or 15 already, was still not my best day, but the, the, the thing that I want to stress here, remember how I said that, that, that uh, body weight is not the most important thing, it's not the meaningful thing to track? I want to show two pictures side by side. 
Uh, the first one is from about 18 months ago, so it was May of last year, hitting 185 pounds, under 19% body fat, uh, and this one is my current week's progress picture, so you know, up half a pound and up a couple uh, points for body fat, uh, but even though the numbers say one thing, if I look you know, where I was before, eh, not too impressive, right? I'm not, not saying that I'm impressive at all. I'm never going to be the, uh, the fitness model guy. But when I look at me, the thing that I'm actually tracking, I can see better definition. I can see better fitness. I can see more muscles. I can see that damn vein sticking out in my neck. I hadn't noticed that guy before. Um, but I can see on those mornings when I'm feeling like I have been you know, pushing myself and driving myself and I'm just not making any progress. You know, we all have those days when it seems like nothing's working. Being able to go back and see, not just in numbers, but in the rich data, in the pictures themselves, uh, the changes that we've made in ourselves, this is very, very motivating. Uh, and you know, at this point, I want to do a quick personal call out. I know that my friend Roly is on this call. Uh, Roly has, in the, the past year, uh, worked on his own personal fitness goal. I've been watching him on Facebook, uh, and I just want to say uh, that both what you shared and the progress that you've made, Roly, is is stunning. I can't imagine how you've done it or what you've done. So, uh, kudos, extra kudos to you. Moving back into uh, the reports here, uh, I have three separate dashboard uh, uh, reports set up in my workbook that focus on either uh, weight training exercises, distance training exercise, or body weight exercises. And the thing that I can do is for uh, the top level in the filters, I can select the activity that I want to target. So right now we're looking at barbell bench press. Uh, I could choose barbell deadlift or you know, whatever it is that we want to look at. We looked at deadlift earlier, so we'll, we'll go with this guy. So I'm pulling in both the image URLs or the, the, the image from bodybuilding.com as well as a whole bunch of metadata from my personal exercises. The key things that are important to me is when I'm planning my workout for the week ahead, typically my program will say, do these exercises in this rep range. So choose a weight where you will hit failure. You, know, you can't go on anymore after this many repetitions. So the first view that I have uh, in my dashboard is for a given rep. So this is my one rep max right now. So one rep or two rep or three reps or 10 reps, what's the maximum weight that I've actually lifted in the past at this weight? And uh, by simply being able to choose a specific activity, let's go back to bench press, we'll see the same sort of thing here, I can see uh, exactly what I've done, and I can either target that, or if I'm trying to push beyond, maybe add 5 pounds or add 10 pounds or what have you. I can also see uh, down here on the bottom right my uh, historical progress, so how many pounds have I moved, you know, what's the total volume that I've moved uh, per month over time. Uh, I can see uh, in this chart here three different views. One of them is the maximum pounds that I've lifted in that month, which is kind of what we have uh, below, but from a max perspective. But the red and blue are two different calculations for a one RM or single rep max weight uh, 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 KPI target figure. Uh, the, the one rep max is a, a bodybuilding uh, concept that essentially says, based on what you've lifted so far, this is what we believe uh, you could lift with a single rep on your best day based on what you've done so far. Uh, and let me zoom in up here real quick. There are two different uh, standard calculations. I don't know which one is which one uh, or which one is, is valid. I have a feeling that for me, uh, this one is probably a lot closer to being accurate than this one is. Uh, but they have uh, two different calculations that people use to set these targets. And uh, by having this as part of the dashboard, if I am either looking to set a personal record, you know, I've set a goal or a challenge for myself, or if I'm using a technique like negative reps, where you actually go beyond this, and even though you don't lift the weight, you lower the weight in a very controlled fashion, 
uh, it's a way to uh, to push past a plateau and to you know achieve uh, gains in strength that you might not otherwise be able to achieve. So I've got all this information right in a single dashboard. From a distance perspective, as we move over to distance training, we've got the same sort of thing but with less information because uh, A, distance is less interesting to me and this is my workbook, uh, but also uh, I don't use this quite so much but for uh, for each one of these exercises, you know, I do more stationary bi uh, biking than pretty much any other distance or cardio stuff. Uh, I can see how many miles I bike, what my average is for a, a bunch of different things. Uh, for uh, running, let me come down here. Uh, I can see you know, what I've run, how I'm running. I'm actually training for my very first 5K right now. I hate running, but I've got a bunch of friends who run, and if I run in the 5K, then they will be more receptive when I tell them that running sucks and they should go to the gym instead. And someone, someone out there is laughing at me. Keep in mind that I am uh, laughing at myself as well. Uh, for body weight training, uh, this is also uh, one of the areas that's less fleshed out, but for uh, body weight exercises like pull-ups or push-ups or dips or the like, I can again see uh, how many I've done, what my maximum reps are, things like that. Uh, uh, I've got some updates that I want to do in the queries that feed into this that I have yet to do, uh, so that's a little to-do item for me. I've got a big picture view that tracks things over time in general, so I can see on a month-by-month -month basis uh, how many points I've earned on photocracy uh, broken down uh, by muscle group. And remember that all of the, the metadata about muscle groups and, and the like is coming from bodybuilding.com through the mashup that we're doing. Uh, so I can see essentially where I've been spending my time. If I sort uh, down below looking at the details by volume as an example, uh, I can see which exercises or on which exercises I have moved the most weight over time as well. So uh, it's, a, again, a motivation tool as well as a tracking tool. Um, I love this visualization in PowerView, but to be honest with you, I don't know how to get value out of it. I've left it in here because it looks so pretty. Uh, but other than seeing, uh, you know, the size saying, uh, uh, how many uh, pounds I've moved and the, uh, uh, the posi no, sorry, the, the, the size being how many activities, you know, how many different exercises uh, and the size being how many pounds I moved. Uh, it's uh, not super useful. I can track my uh, uh, Facebook check-in, so I'm pulling this information in. One of the things that you'll notice down here in the bottom right is uh, I tend to get to the gym way too early. One of my uh, personal goals is moderation. So, you know, uh, most of the time I have gotten to the gym in the 4 o'clock hour more than any other hour of the day, which is probably not the healthiest thing to do. I do want to stress that for 2014, if I filter this, I am now uh, in a much better state from a moderation and daily sanity perspective than I have been in past years, so I'm making some progress there. And from a uh, more tactical or day-to-day -day tracking perspective, and this is the last report here, I can look at uh, the individual workouts. So for example, uh, let me click here. Yesterday was leg day at the gym, so in the morning I got up and did these things. I have started a fencing activity in the evening, so great sport, you know, a, a different outlet for my uh, uh, for my fitness bug, uh, but I can see uh, what I've done on a day-to-day -day basis, the points that I've earned day on day. Uh, again, just keeping motivated. You can see that you know I've got some days that are primarily rest days. I'll do a little bit of cardio, but not a lot more. Uh, uh, today was one of them, so I got to the gym and did uh, uh, a little bit of time on uh, the stationary bike before I came into the office. It's a great way uh, to start the day, and it that with the uh, the solution in Excel, it's a great way to keep track of the progress that you've uh, that you've made and the effort that you've put in. So, for me, I've learned a couple things about fitness through my exercise. The thing that I want to stress is that everything that you see online, you know, if you were to look, let me come over here. Let me do this for a second. So, if you look at me on Twitter, I focus on my little uh, you know my little profile picture. This is the best progress picture, the best selfie I've ever taken. Bulging muscle right after the gym, little bit of sweat, Man of War logo. Um, 
boy, that's that's metal. That's that's this is a fit guy, right? Well, you know, I don't look like that most of the time. Uh, you know, I, I I work out, but I was born to be tall and skinny, uh, not muscular. Uh, but as you are uh, working on your fitness journey, be aware that the things that everyone promotes is the best of the best. They're showing you the highlight reel from their life. And what we tend to do is we tend to compare our day-to-day -day reality with somebody else's highlight reel. Uh, and uh, this is one of the things that, that I've struggled with. You know, you always, I always tend to compare myself uh, to those around me. You know, I want to be you know, better than him. I want to be bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, whatever, uh, whether it's in fitness or any other aspect of my life. You need to realize that uh, the thing that you're judging yourself against if you do this is not actually real. Uh, I also want to point out that from a, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, from a, uh, a dietary perspective, uh, a lot of people say, you know, it's like, you know, I, you know I, I would love to be in better shape if it, if it didn't mean uh, uh, dieting and exercise. The thing that I've found is that uh, I'm never hungry. I eat more and I eat better these days than I ever have. Uh, the key thing uh, to stay on track with your fitness without thinking about it as dieting uh, is to just have the food that you need with you, to have the good food with you, uh, you know, have a power bar, quest bar, what have you, prep your meals on the weekends. Making bad choices is usually the result of poor preparation more than anything else. Uh, I also want to point out that uh, sleep is perhaps the most important thing for me. On those days when I get eight hours of sleep, I feel great, I'm on track. If I get six hours of sleep or four hours of sleep or whatever as the deadlines and the travel comes and goes, uh, uh, that impacts every aspect of my life. I've been amazed at how important sleep is. Uh, and I've also cut alcohol out of my life for the last six months or so. It's made a huge difference. I miss a cocktail now and then, but uh, remember that if you are trying to make a change, uh, alcohol works against you, not necessarily because of the calories in the drink, but because it weakens your willpower and there's calories around the drink. And uh, the final thing here, uh, if I look and if I'm honest with myself, my primary goal is to be 25 again, uh, and no matter how much I'm working out, I'm still getting older. Uh, I need to figure out a way to adjust my goals, uh, but we haven't, uh, we haven't quite reached that yet. So. Uh, next steps for me, for the solution itself, uh, I need to, as mentioned during the, uh, uh, during the tour, uh, I need to focus on uh, body weight tracking and make sure that that's a little bit more realistic. Photocracy uh, for a lot of these exercises uh, lets you track if you have either additional weight on you or if it's an assisted exercise. Uh, I currently don't have logic to handle that. I need to get that in there for my model to be complete. I'm also looking at uh, additional data sources to put in. Uh, I've started uh, pulling in information from the USDA uh, nutrient database. So for a given serving of a given type of food, how much protein, how many carbs, how many calories, how much fat, things like that. Uh, uh, having this as additional stream of input uh, opens up more and more BI scenarios. I don't know when I'm going to get to it, but we could do that. There's also uh, additional data sources like a Fitbit or other fitness trackers. I don't use any of them today, but when uh, there's one on the market that looks like it's worth my time and worth my money, I will definitely be looking at this additional data stream coming in. And of course, Power BI is an ongoing uh, set of capabilities. Most teams, including the Power Query team, uh, uh, release new capabilities every month. So I will be updating this from my own personal uh, uses as we go on, uh, and we'll try to keep this up to date and keep it shared with the community. And of course, I'm trying to get a little bit more moderation and balance in my life, uh, not working out you know, every single day. One of the things that I'm doing, I mentioned, is starting fencing. Uh, if you are in the Seattle area, I recommend going to loanin.org. We've got the URL up there. Uh, if you are not in the Seattle area, I recommend going to swordschool.com. Uh, check it out uh, in case you're interested in something that is cooler than you ever thought that people actually did. Uh, next steps for you guys, hopefully you will go to PowerBI.com, uh, download the add-ins, uh, go for the free trial of the Office 365 stuff in the cloud, kick the tires, see how you can use this for your own scenarios. And 
to reiterate some of the things that we looked at from a fitness resources perspective. Uh, let me just uh, throw some URLs up there. Uh, create an account on Photocracy, a great social network, uh, great data source, even if you've got to massage it a little. I think I've done most of the heavy lifting there already, no pun intended. There's great resources on bodybuilding.com. Pick one of the programs. If you don't know what you're doing, these guys know what to do. Follow their instructions, see the progress, revisit and reevaluate. But this is uh, if there's one takeaway from a fitness perspective, start with one of these programs, just do it, lift the weight, go through the exercise, follow the guidance, you'll be amazed at how well you respond uh, if you haven't been doing this before. And uh, the jimstepani.com, if you decide that this is uh, something that you want to work into your life, I can't say enough uh, about the, the advice that this guy has. I think of him in many ways as the Elton Brown of weightlifting. Uh, if you've ever watched cooking shows, Elton Brown runs Good Eats, and it's all, uh, it's all uh, focused on telling a story, having the science to back it up, and communicating it in a very accessible way. Here's a technique, here's a dish, do it. Uh, here's a, an exercise, here's a program, here's why you do it, now do it. Uh, so, you know, kudos to Jim. Uh, and I have shared all of the resources demonstrated today, the OneDrive URL is down there. I will tweet it shortly. Uh, but essentially what I've done is in a public folder on my OneDrive, I have my uh, reference data cache. I have a, uh, the, the main workout tracking workbook. I have that Grease Monkey script. Uh, when I was trying to get it yesterday, the, the, the main URL that I downloaded it from wasn't working, so I took my local copy and dropped it on OneDrive so you can get started. Uh, I have a sample uh, weight and body fat tracking workbook that, uh, that this workbook references. And then I've got a README file to get you started in case you've forgotten everything that we've talked about or in case uh, you find or someone finds uh, the OneDrive resources before they see uh, this particular slide. So uh, with no further ado, uh, I want to point out, A, we're over time, B, we finished earlier than I thought we would, uh, and C, if you have any questions, comments, feedback, uh, suggestions for improvement, anything along these lines, either on the Power BI side of things or on the fitness side of things, uh, please reach out to me on Twitter. I am at SQL Allfather, and uh, I, I really am looking forward to getting feedback uh, from everyone who's attended. Thank you very much for spending this hour with me, and uh, I look forward to the conversation that we're kicking off today. Hopefully I've inspired at least one person out there to uh, uh, get into better shape. The people in my fitness circle, my fitness network have really made a big difference in my life, so hopefully I'll be able to pay forward just a little bit with this, uh, with this solution. So with no further ado, I will hand this back over to you, Jen, and thank you very much for, uh, for making this work. And I'm not hearing Jen, so she may not be with us, or she may be fumbling with her mute button. I'm fumbling with my mute button. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Sorry about that. And thank you very, very much. That was an awesome session. I really enjoyed that. I learned a lot about the fitness side of things. I have tried some of these programs. The, I did the Lee Librada one, and I did the Jamie one as well and actually knocked six inches off my waist, which is just when you consider that's the circumference of, <laughs> of your waist, how much fat that must have been. <laughs> I hope I'm not putting anyone off the dinner. But then I thought that was an amazing session. We've had loads of great comments, so without further ado, I'll shoot to the questions, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm unfamiliar with, uh, with the GoToMeeting Q&A side of things, so uh, if you could read them, Sure. I'll respond to you verbally if that works. Yeah, that's better. Um, there's a small questions panel at the right-hand side. Sorry, I should have showed you earlier. That's my fault. Uh, but the first question is a really simple one. Um, there are lots of bands called Power Something. And is this where the name Power BI comes from? 
Uh, it, absolutely, that is the case. Uh, we named Power BI after the power metal genre of heavy metal, not after a specific band, but just after the metal in general. Uh, we were going to call it BI O War after Manowar, since we're all huge Manowar fans. Uh, but we figured that that would be actionable, and we steered clear of that. <laughs> I'm not sure what Microsoft man marketing would have thought of that. <laughs> uh, ACDC has been mentioned, of course. Another, well, I like them, and I can't believe you're in Birmingham. I didn't realise that. And so, Forrest said that this much data just rocks, and what an amazing project. And Gina has dying to know what the OneDrive tip is, but I think it's the. Yep, so, so the, the OneDrive tip is, is essentially a specific way of pulling data, uh, you know, an HTTP addressable Excel workbook. Uh, it was something that I don't know if I would have figured this out on my own, uh, but, but thanks to the blog where I've got the URL to that blog in the workbook itself, essentially what you do is you take the resource ID that OneDrive embeds in the URL, uh, and you put it into a specific format link that's onedrive.com slash download something with that ID. Uh, but essentially, you need to take information from a couple places uh, and, uh, uh, and craft the URL yourself is the tip. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, just a few more questions, a few comments. Somebody said they thought it was really interesting. Uh, Donald has said that handling irregular column sizes was a really interesting technique. So thank you for that. And Roly Perot, Roly has said, nice job, Matthew. And Becky has uh, said it was a great presentation and congratulations on your story as well. And Becky has also asked that she said she noticed Excel supports JavaScript now. And she loves the D3, um, D3 demos. Any plans in doing anything using D3 in Excel? And she's got a smiley after it. Oh, so, so I, I, honestly, I don't know what D3 is. Uh, so mo just uh, for, for uh, full uh, uh, clarity or full visibility, uh, Becky, uh, my work at Microsoft is on some of the back-end services. I work on the... Uh, the data catalog team, which is, uh, uh, we provide services for information management and data discovery. Uh, when it comes to Excel, uh, I am a, a user, I am a consumer, uh, so uh, I don't know what the Excel team has uh, in mind, and as much as it pains me to admit this out loud in public, uh, I don't really write code anymore. You know, I, I was a professional developer for many years, and these days I spend more time in, in Outlook and PowerPoint and Word than I do in any uh, real technical tool. So I apologize. I don't know the details there. That's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, so Becky's just came back to say thank you. And uh, Jeff and a few others have asked for the download link for the Excel workbook, which, um, which you're showing in the screen at the bottom there, the bottom left-hand side. And I'll try and tweet that out as well to make sure everybody can see it. And that was the end of the questions. And um, I just wanted to say thank you very much, Matthew, for your time. That was an amazing session. And at the very early part of the day for you as well, out in Seattle. So thank you very much for getting up so early for us and presenting us with a great session. Well, thank you, Jen, and thank you to everyone who's attended. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing the, uh, the recording as well, uh, and I will be tweeting over the next couple minutes uh, links to the resources that I've shared. So uh, if for any reason you don't have that URL, uh, you'll have it shortly, uh, SQL Allfather on Twitter. That's great, thank you. The YouTube video will go up on our site um, as YouTube and then it's forward slash pass BIVC. Um, it should go up later this evening. What I have to do is take the video then squash it up so it fits into YouTube. <laughs> but I've got a converter to do that and um, I'll be doing that in the next few hours. So I wanted to say thank you very much to Matthew and thank you to everybody for their engagement and their and their attendance. And I'd like to say thank you to Pragmatic Works as well for looking after us in this session. And they support us and they will be giving out the usual book token. So with that, I will end the session. And thank you, everyone. And wherever you are in the world, good morning, good evening, or good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye.